Hey guys, welcome to Stockless Tech Spot. In this video, I'm going to show you how to route the fifth generation Amazon Fire. This is the 2015 version, and it's really easy. Uh, I have the link in the description to the XDA forum post, which uh, Glitchy Fox here has uh, posted for us. And he's actually one of the developers behind this route. And it's they've made it very easy for us. It's uh, literally just one click of a button. And it's uh, going to take a few steps here, nothing too difficult. So um, yeah, let's just get it right into it. Uh, right here, first thing we're going to need are the ADB drivers for the computer. So go ahead and get the ADB drivers, and there's instructions on how to do that. And also, we want to download the file that they provide for us, or files I should say. And if you uh, go into the link in the description, I'll also have this uh, separately in my description. So if you don't want to actually go to the website, you can go ahead and just get this uh, link right here. And if you already have ADB drivers installed, you can just skip to this part anyway. After we download it, you're going to be presented with uh, this zip file here. And you're going to see the three folders. And depending on what operating system you're on, you should know that. Uh, you'll you know uh, extract the respective version. And I have the Windows version since I'm on a Windows computer here. And you're just going to double click in there. And they're going to have this one fire root ready for you to go. And we're just going to double click. You could read through this if you want. Basically, they're just asking you to plug in. But before you plug in, let's go to the tablet here. Before we plug in, we're going to go to our settings, uh, device options. Scroll down to the serial number. We're going to tap this several times. I forget how many times, but it was a bunch of times. And eventually it's going to say, hey, you are now a developer. So once we get the developer options enabled, we're going to go into developer options. And what we want to do is come down here to enable ADB. Make sure that's enabled. It should be by default once you uh, get in here. And also, uh, it's, it should say enable USB debugging authorization. So we want to make sure that we have that enabled. Uh, right now it says revoke, so if I do want to revoke those, I could uh, go ahead and select it. And it's going to ask me if I really want to revoke them. So anyways, once we get that done, we're pretty much ready to connect it to the computer. So I uh, just want to reiterate, make sure your ADB drivers are installed. And uh, if they are not, uh, yeah, go ahead and do that because you really do need those. And they tell you all of that in this little box as well if you want to read through that. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this uh, using a USB that they did not provide. So I'm just using any regular USB here, micro USB. And let's plug that in. And our computer recognizes it. And it's going to say uh, press any key to continue. Now before you do that, you want to go to your uh, tablet and it might show you a prompt saying, um, hey, a computer wants to access the tablet via ADB, do you want to allow it? And uh, you could grant permission to that. So um, you might have to do that before we go any further, so just double check your tablet. Uh, you should have saw the prompt right away anyway. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just hit click uh, enter here to continue. I don't think it matters what you push. And there it goes. It's going to start doing what it does. Now it's going to install the Google Play Store here. It's the first thing it does, which is amazing. So mine's uh, starting to have failures because uh, I already did this and it says it already exists so it's just going to skip through all of that but it's going to go through and um, pretty much just make it into a more regular Android feeling tablet. Uh, it's going to take away a lot of the Amazon um, restrictions I guess you could say on the tablet and also um, I, I don't know if it actually will change the launcher. Uh, I had Nova Launcher installed, but uh, it didn't work because I guess the Amazon launcher superseded it in the permissions or something. But after I did this route, uh, for whatever reason, the launcher, the Nova Launcher started being the default and only launcher. I can't even access the Amazon launcher anymore. So I'm not complaining because the Amazon launcher was horrible. But I'm really happy about that. That's why if I show you here, I'm just going to disconnect it because I already did this. It doesn't matter for me. Now, I am currently on Nova Launcher. I don't have any icons. I haven't set it up because I just did this route. But it's uh, it's Nova Launcher now, which is amazing. Um, but anyways, um, another thing to note is over here it says if it hangs, please accept the USB prompt or whatever. Um, sometimes uh, 
between the reboots, it wouldn't be recognized by this um, program anymore. So I had to disconnect and reconnect. And that seemed to work out okay because um, as you can see, it's, it's working fine now. But uh, in case it happens to you guys, uh, don't freak out. Just disconnect and reconnect and it should re-recognize um, re it and continue the process. So there you go. That's how you root it. It's really simple. They made it really easy for us to do. It's noob friendly as they say. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and um, I'll help you out. Or you could go ahead and post on the XDA forum and uh, show them some appreciation as well. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.